So this is actually an unpopular opinion, but I have to share with you guys, okay? So whenever you actually wanna go out there and you wanna buy a home and you're interested and usually have like house fever, you start to think about like, hey, what's the best loan out there? Is it a conventional loan, an FHA loan, a USDA loan? What is the best option out there? And which one should I take advantage of? On top of that, I could even use my retirement account, take some money out, tax-free, penalty-free, because I'm a first-time home buyer. There are a lot of things out there, even like grants and offers from your state, just to go out there and basically promote people buying homes, because in reality, it's a good thing. And it's actually a good thing for you to actually be interested in buying a home. But for just one second here, I know that whenever you're interested in buying something or wanting something, all the information you search for is information that actually confirms whatever your thoughts actually are. So I actually want to say something before I actually get into the best type of loans out there, what I recommend you actually do, and what I actually don't recommend you do and what you stay away from. So make sure you make it all the way to the end of the video. But here is something to actually make you not want to buy a home. So if you have a bunch of debt, like consumer debt, like credit card debt, student loan debt, a car loan, okay, all this stuff you should focus on first paying off your debts saving up for an emergency fund and once you have those things to like those two things covered then you actually worry about buying a home because when you have debt and then you're signing up also for a 30-year mortgage it's a problem okay it's a problem waiting to happen because when something goes wrong you won't be able to let it like um to solve it and that house is probably going to be a nightmare number two is if you have no reason to own a home maybe just hold off okay i bought a home way too early i didn't have a family i wasn't married i'm still not married still not a family and right now i'm just renting okay and i bought the home for cash and i'm actually trying to sell it right now because when you don't need a home Putting all that cash into something you don't need at the time is really not a good idea. So wait until you need a home to buy a home. So if you're debt free and you wanna buy a home and you're actually good to go, then great, you can continue to watch this video. Now, the first thing is guys, as always, smash like button, I appreciate it a ton. And here's the first part, okay? So when it comes to the type of loans to actually get and how they actually work, you have, for example, conventional loans, FHA loans, and top of that also even USDA loans. Now, what is the big difference here? Now, whenever you talk about, for example, a conventional loan, it's a loan that's not guaranteed by a government party. In a sense, it's a little bit more riskier because it's just basically guaranteed by you. So if you don't pay, then the bank is kind of like screwed. So usually it does require like at least a three to 10 to 20% down payment based on your qualifications, okay? So based on your debt to income ratio, based on your credit score, based on your situation, because basically the safer of a person you actually are or a lender potentially the safer you are to a lender as a borrower then they're obviously going to require a lot less from you but the riskier you potentially are they're going to require a lot more from you so the ways to qualify are actually just a tad bit stricter because they have to worry about your credit score they have to worry about your income they have to not like they don't usually worry about this, but they always do, but they do take those things into consideration even more because again, the loan is guaranteed by you, so they have to do a very good job at underwriting you to make sure that you are a solid borrower. So it might have a few more requirements. Now, number two is usually going to be an FHA loan. You know, people that have, for example, low credit scores, don't have that much money for a down payment, usually like 3.5% as a minimum. You know, people actually look into these loans more. Now, this loan stands for Federal Housing Administration. That's what FHA stands for. Now, the idea is that the government is going to be, for example, your collateral. So if you don't pay, the bank knows the government is going to pay. So guess what? It's a lot less strict because they know if you don't pay, we have a full-blown guarantee that the government is going to pay us. So you can have a credit score of between like five, like 580 and still qualify, even between 500 and still potentially qualify depending again on your personal situation. It all depends on how the bank actually wants to underwrite the whole program and how they actually want to look at your profile as a borrower. Now, basically saying FHA loan, you have a low down payment, not the best credit score, and you just basically want to get into a home as possible, it's guaranteed by, um, by the government, so it also means a lower interest rate. That's what it basically usually means. So I had a friend, 
he got an FHA loan. It made sense. You got a, a very low rate when it comes to your fixed rate. And it was actually pretty good. It's not a bad thing whatsoever. Now, number three is going to be a USDA loan. These loans are guaranteed by the Department of Agriculture. And usually they're going to be not for like urban, but more like rural places, okay, with populations of less than 35,000 people. And some of these loans don't require even a single ounce of a down payment. Basically, they're trying to promote you to actually go to these places to actually buy a home and to actually live there my point is this guys okay overall all these programs they have some benefits to them okay some save you money on interest require lower down payments but overall these are just programs for the government to actually incentivize you to take some action but it doesn't mean per se that that action is towards your benefit okay so if i have a program to incentivize you to give me a hundred thousand dollars right it doesn't mean it's what I, it was actually best for you per se. So here is what I actually recommend you do. So whether you want to get an FHA loan or whether the home you're actually looking into is actually in a rural area and it actually makes sense to get a USDA loan, my point is this. You want to search for the best deal available to you, but you want to buy based on your wallet and not what's actually being offered by the government. Whether you get a grant, or you can qualify for one of these loans, that's great. But that should be the cherry on top. It shouldn't be the reason you actually go into the transaction because one thing is you get an FHA loan and one thing is you doing an FHA loan because you don't have that much money for a down payment and you can barely afford to get in the home in the first place. That's just stupid and not a good idea. So here's my little outline when it comes to my home requirements and what you actually want to do. I already covered before, be debt free, have an emergency account and make sure you actually need to buy a home. Those things are just like common sense, but it's actually not common because we're not taught those things. But here are some extra or more detailed things you actually want to consider. The home you buy, make sure you get it on a 15 year mortgage. The goal is to pay it off, not to extend the payments, to so have a lower payment so you can actually qualify or afford the payments. No, the goal is buy a home you can afford to pay off in 15 years or less. On top of that, make sure the home between this mortgage, this taxes, insurance, this PMI, it's um, all of those things associated with the home, not electricity, not gas, not maintenance, right? But, but well, maintenance, yes. Including those things right there that is no more than 33% of your monthly income. As far as maintenance, you could just have, for example, a fund with like a few grand, like 1% of the property value or 2% of the property value just there in case something goes wrong. This way you can actually fix it because when you walk into a home, guess what? Something's gonna break at a certain point and you want to be prepared. So you have those two points, okay? 15 year mortgage, the home on the payments is no more than a third, 30% of your monthly income net. So that basically means if I make $1,000, I'm not gonna spend more than $333 per month on a 15 year mortgage to buy this home. What does this do exactly, okay? It limits you to buying a home you can actually afford. And you want to put down between a 10 to 20% down payment. This way, you actually avoid PMI insurance at 20%. But if you just put down 10%, you, you have a good down payment in there, some good equity in there, and you can build up to 20% a lot faster. But when somebody puts down 0% or 3% or 5%, it's usually because they can't even afford to get into the home in the first place, and they just want to rush into it, and that's not a good sign. So get into a home with a full blown emergency account, with a good 10% or 20% down payment, and being able to say it's only a third of your income, so you have more income in there, that's perfect, okay, that's perfect. Now this usually means you have some options here. You might not be able to afford something like this, so you might have to consider, for example, a commute, or having to move somewhere, or switching states. That's also a possibility, okay? But it's not an excuse to buy a home you can't afford just because those are the prices, okay? So just for fun, guys, okay? If you have cash to buy a property and you don't even need a loan, that's good, all right? That's great. But again, just make sure when you buy this home, it's the best deal available to you. What's important is that this deal makes sense to you, not the bank or the government programs or whatever they actually want to utilize to say, we're doing a good job. Just make sure this deal makes sense to you. Um, here's a personal example here of what you don't want to do. When I was in New York, I had a pretty good high income and I was actually trying to qualify for a $700,000 
property. It was a two-family home or three-family home. And my whole goal was I'm going to rent two units. I'm going to live in one, get an FHA loan, put down 3.5%, use the rents to cover the mortgage. And all this sounded very good, right? Very strategic, but it was very stupid because right after that, pandemic happened. People stopped paying rent. Things are cure, okay? So my point is you want to make sure the home you buy is a home you can afford. But if I bought a home, that is only a third of my monthly income. I put down 10%, I have no debts, I have a full blown emergency account. If pandemic happens, I have six months to keep paying that mortgage, to get another job and still be able to cover it. It's only a third, right? So that's the whole idea. You don't wanna be exposed or just be sitting like, like just like, oh my gosh, I'm messed up. I have to forfeit this home. You wanna make sure this home is a gift, is a blessing, not a nightmare. And usually when you can't afford something and you do it anyways, that's when the nightmare factor gets put into play. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Comment down below any questions. So conventional loans, FHA loan, USDA loans. Um, you even have, for example, like um, like even like army loans. There are a bunch of loans out there. But utilize whatever you can use, but make sure it falls under your guidelines and your rules and what you're actually looking to do. You know, using those tools is great, but don't do what you cannot afford to do just using them okay it's like more like a cherry on top if you get a grant for like 10 grand and by the way there's also like another option which is basically like i think it's like um there's an exception so if you have a 401k a roth ira like any retirement account usually they might let you take out a certain amount of money i think it's like 10k if i'm mistaken and that 10k is can be like fully tax-free no problem and you can put that towards your down payment which is great that's fine too but again it's fine but if you can avoid doing that and let that money grow, then that's also even better, right? So consider all your options, use all your options, but make sure you're being responsible using these options and not trying to make a deal make sense relying on the government because that's super dangerous and you don't want to rely on them, okay? Thanks for watching. Um, Long-Term Team officially out. Um, up here is another video. Over here is my face. Subscribe as always. Long-Term Team officially out.